everybody hope you guys are all doing safe so the footage you're watching right now is shot with the main camera of the xiaomi 12s ultra so i'm very excited about this phone because the last two xiaomi ultra phones were awesome and also this one seems to take it to the next level this main camera has a one inch sensor with Leica lens and it's also co-developed between Xiaomi and Sony so it's a brand new Sony sensor and the footage you're watching right now is straight from the camera and the sound you're hearing is also coming directly from the phone oh it's hot how do I sound right now how do I sound right now so with a one inch sensor that means you should be able to take in a lot of light and also there should be pretty good natural bokeh around my head right now but you guys should know the drill by now. I'm gonna take this phone out right now, take a bunch of photos of the phone against other top camera phones, and I'm gonna wait till it gets dark. I'm gonna do some more testing, and the video you're watching is gonna be mostly on this on the camera. So this is not a full review because this is just day one with the phone. <laughs> Okay, it is nighttime now. I've been testing the Xiaomi 12s Ultra heavily for the past like six hours, and yeah, there's a lot to like with this phone, and the cameras are indeed really awesome. I'll get back to the cameras really fast, but first, let's talk overall hardware and the price and availability of this phone. So, bad news for a lot of you guys watching this the Xiaomi 12s Ultra right now, so far, is only going to be selling inside China. Although I do think there is going to be an international global version coming down the line. You know how I know because the packaging of this phone that I got was all in English. Usually if a phone is only sold in China, it would have some Chinese words on it. It wouldn't be all in English. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is going to be a global version of this phone down the line. But as of right now, the China unit, and it starts at 5,999 Chinese yuan, which comes out to only around 900 US dollars. This is for the 8 gig RAM. 256 gig version so $900 starting price is really good considering all the hardware that you're getting again I'll talk cameras in a bit let's go over the rest of the hardware so power on this phone is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 plus Gen 1 so this is a newer version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip that was used in the Galaxy S22 Ultra the OnePlus 10 Pro and the previous Xiaomi 12 Pro according to Qualcomm this newer 8 plus Gen 1 chip gives you 10% CPU and GPU improvement over the 8 Gen 1 and also Qualcomm claims that this new chip will bring 30% energy efficient improvement over the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. That is huge if true because that means this chip will be more efficient, battery life will be longer and also the phone won't run as hot. Now I haven't been able to test battery life yet because this is still day one of the phone but I have been able to test other stuff and the benchmark numbers back up Qualcomm's claims. So look at this Geekbench score. This is a significantly higher score than my Galaxy S22 Ultra, which runs on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. In fact, this Geekbench score is pretty close to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is running on the A15 Bionic. Like we all know that Apple's A chips are more powerful than Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips, but at least this one, the A plus Gen 1, closes the gap a little bit. And also another big win for the 12S Ultra is that I jumped into the app 3D Mark and ran a 20 minute stress test called the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. It basically pushes the phone as hard as it can for 20 minutes. And this phone actually finished the test with pretty respectable scores. The Xiaomi 12 Pro could not finish the test. It kept crashing about 75% of the way through because the phone would overheat. So whether it's the new 3D cooling system in here or the efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but this phone definitely has better thermals than the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Now this display, this is a 6.73 inch Samsung AMOLED panel, 120 hertz refresh rate. Everything is buttery smooth. It's an LTPO panel, so refresh rate jumps between 1 hertz to 120 hertz. Maximum brightness is 1500 nits and it supports 10 bit colors and it is a beautiful looking panel. Now looking at the back of the phone, you have this vegan leather finish, which I quite like. If you have watched my videos, you know I am a big fan of leather backs. This camera bump is huge and it sticks out quite a bit. Despite this phone being so top heavy, it can still stand up on its own, which is impressive. And this camera module is also surrounded by what Xiaomi says is a 24 karat gold ring. You also have the symmetrical speaker grills at the top and bottom of the device tuned by Harman Kardon.
There's a 4850 milliamp hour battery in here that can be charged at 67 watt speeds and the charger is included with the box and also supports 50 watt wireless charging and yeah there's ip68 water and dust resistance too so everything i just mentioned right now is tip top premium flagship territory but at the same time other than the snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 chip there's nothing you haven't seen before so let's talk about the stuff that you haven't seen so this is a triple camera system headlined by 50 megapixel main camera with a one inch sensors this is a sony imx 989 sensor and it's brand new designed by Sony in collaboration with Xiaomi. Like Sony basically built the sensor just for Xiaomi to use in this phone. And the sensor is also covered by an AP lens. So it's an eight layer lens designed by Leica. So Leica also worked with Xiaomi to build this lens specifically for this camera. And then you have two other cameras, a 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 48 megapixel five times periscope zoom lens. The five times periscope zoom lens, I can tell it's an improvement over last year's Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra because it actually keeps up quite well against the S22 Ultra zoom lens. I will show you samples really quick. Let's get back to the main camera. So the benefit of a one inch sensor in addition to taking in a lot of light is this really shallow depth of field. That means when I take picture of something, of an object or a subject, there's a clear separation between the object and subject and the background. You see this creamy bokeh around whatever I shoot at, whether it's a cup of coffee or my camera or a flower. I also noticed that this camera focuses very fast. As you can see here, this flower is moving a bit because of the wind. But anytime I bring the 12S Ultra closer to the flower, it locks on to focus immediately. With the Galaxy S22 Ultra, it takes a beat longer to get that focus. And if I try to snap the photo before, the shot will come out a little bit blurry. As you can see from these side-by-side -side samples here, the shot from the 12S Ultra produces more bokeh than the iPhone 13 Pro Max's image or the Galaxy S22 Ultra's image. And you can see the Xiaomi 12S Ultra pulls in a little bit more light too. So right here I went to this dark alley to take a photo of the street art and you can see that the Xiaomi 12S Ultra just snapped the photo, it didn't need to turn on night mode. But Samsung and Apple's phones needed to use a 2 to 3 second night mode just to pull in more light. And then if you look at all three photos side by side, if you look at them on a small phone screen they look about equally as good. But then once you zoom in to 400%, then you'll see that the iPhone's image is very noisy. Xiaomi and Samsung's photos are pretty much even, but you have to remember, one of these phones didn't need to use night mode. Now moving on to this next low light scene, I'm gonna bring in the Vivo X80 Pro, which is the current camera king. And you can see the Vivo X80 Pro still arguably produce the best looking image. Notice the iPhone blows out some of the lights. The S22 Ultra again and the 12S Ultra look pretty much neck and neck. But then once we move to ultra wide, then we can see it's a clear win for Vivo and Xiaomi with Samsung and Apple in distant third and fourth place. Now one of the concerns I had about this camera when I heard about the spec was that because the image sensor is so large, maybe it would pull in too much light. That means if I'm taking a picture of something that's kind of with a bright light source pointing at me, that scene will be blown out. That's a problem the iPhone 13 Pro Max runs into all the time. And even the Galaxy S22 Ultra to a certain extent, but I'm happy to report that nope, Xiaomi's image processing algorithm, I guess along with the Leica partnership, have managed to develop a shot that's perfectly balanced almost every time. If you look at this shot here, both the iPhone and the Galaxy S22 Ultra blows out some of the lights, but then the 12S Ultra keeps perfect balance. Video performance is also excellent during the day as you already saw at the beginning of this video. Stabilization is on point. The mic picks up my voice pretty well and I'm really a fan of the natural bokeh around my head or whatever I'm filming. And also you can now switch between cameras in the middle of filming a video. That means you can go out to the ultra wide or go out to five times zoom and it'll actually use the optical zoom lens. That was not the case with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra last year. Now with low light videography, stabilization takes a hit. As you can see, every step I walk, there's a little bit of shakiness. But overall video quality is still good and remarkably noise free considering how dark this park was at the time. Now since I've only had a couple hours of the phone, I haven't been able to test the camera very thoroughly yet. There's still a lot of different modes I haven't really tested yet like the portrait mode with these new pro lens filters like a black and white filter 35mm that looks pretty good. Okay so let's take a look at the software. So this one runs on MIUI 13 over Android 12. 
Since this phone is only sold in China for now, the phone did not come with Google apps out of the box, but it's very easy to install Google. You just have to jump into Xiaomi's app store, install Google Play Store, and then that's it, you're set. You do have to spend 10 minutes installing all the Google apps that you're usually used to, but once you install them, everything works without any issues. Okay, so that's about it for this video. This is not a full review. Like I said, this is just a very early hands-on. So far, there's a hell of a lot to like with this phone. I'm really excited about this camera system. I'm excited to put it more to the test in the next couple of days, hopefully, if the weather gets a little bit better. So if you're interested in learning more about this phone, please subscribe to my channel because I will have a lot more content on this device, plus a bunch of other gadgets that I can't talk about yet, but a lot to do this month. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.